Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. It is the first week of the month. I am recording this on July 3rd. So the night of the full moon. It is the full moon in Capricorn. This is the peak of the year in some ways, the halfway point. So think about the last six months, everything that was maybe coming up during New Year's and the intentions you were setting with the new moon in Capricorn at that time. New moon to full moon. And this full moon is a lot about releasing any attachment to those things that haven't been working out for us or the things um, that maybe have been and we're celebrating that, like how far we've come. And Capricorn ruling the 10th house is our sign of ambition. So that's why I think I say, it, you know, it's about allowing ourselves to be wherever we are in this moment, knowing that it's the right place, it's the right time. Capricorn is also an energy of responsibility and this is a really good time to do cleansing and ritual around thinking of like the Ten of Wands right now. Removing yourself from any responsibility that isn't yours. Releasing anything you do not claim for yourself. Release what you do not claim. And that's the first thing I want to talk about for this week is the full moon Capricorn. It's happening at the same time it's opposite Mercury. So it's shining a light on cycles we have been caught in regarding our beliefs, origins, home, our ancestry because Mercury is in Cancer and it's opposite the full moon in Capricorn. Cancer rules the fourth house, the fourth house of origins, home, ancestry. Past life, possibly, ancestral wisdom. A Mercury in Cancer can definitely help us tap into ancestral wisdom here, um, if that speaks to you. But also in the areas of home and origins, I feel like regarding the full moon, we're looking at all the values which have been assigned to us or that we've been conditioned to. Like, what are the things we've been conditioned to want? And how is that different than what we actually want? Mercury and, Cap Mercury and Cancer is allowing us to feel into that space between. Um, the second thing I want to highlight this week is Venus square Uranus. This is something I brought up last week, but it's sort of lasting a while because Uranus is a very slow moving planet. We have Leo, sorry, Venus in Leo, Uranus in Taurus. Leo is the character, right? Sorry, the zodiacs are the character, the nature by which things happen in the, these houses. So Venus in Leo, that is like... Um, Venus is, is beauty and love, right? So that is sort of like romantic. It's also out there. It's like making a show, wanting to be seen. And square Uranus, that is a challenging, revolutionary, but also innovative energy. And it's in Taurus, which is loyal, stable, grounded, committed. <laughs> So we're seeing this clash of individuality and freedom and fun versus stability. And what wants to change? What wants to shift within the minutia of those things? Just notice what comes up for you regarding those things. And of course, depending on where those planets are in your personal birth chart will always make some difference or just add a layer of complexity, if you will, so you can check those out. The last thing I want to highlight this week is Mercury sextile Uranus. So there's Uranus again. Uranus again is the planet of change, innovation, revolution. And my favorite cardiologist, um, her name is Nina. I forget her last name. I met her on Clubhouse though. She's a great card reader, cardiologist. You can check out, find her on um, find her online. She says Uranus doesn't care. That's the kind of change that comes is that whether you're ready or not, it's sort of tower energy. It's also the full energy in the tarot. So I wonder if either of those will come out in the reading. And again, Uranus, Uranus is in Taurus. You know what else is in Taurus? North node. But this month that's going to change. It's going to move into Aries. So I think collectively what this means is that we're changing. Though the energy of change and revolution is happening around not only what it is that we value, how those values manifest in, you know, how we approach life in general and 
instead of doing the safe choice, Taurus, the comfortable choice, the steady does it and results will get done choice, the save for the future choice. Although, is Taurus save it for the future? Kind of, because like Taurus rules, fi you know, financial and, and wealth things, abundance. But Taurus is also very luxurious. So I don't know if Taurus is saving for the future. You tell me. What, what, has, what have the last two and a half years felt like? I feel like we were more in the mode of saving for the future, wanting to find stability, wanting to find our groundedness. Oh yeah, I didn't even get into the Illuminated Love Oracle card. It's the first week of July, and you know I've got a, a card for that. So, so yeah, we're moving from... We're experiencing Uranus in Taurus. We're experiencing North Node moving out of Taurus into Aries, where the next two and a half years will be about taking initiative, being the first at something, putting ourselves out there, taking a risk, and seeing what comes to meet us halfway. And with Mercury in Cancer, um, in a harmonious aspect with this Uranus in Taurus, it's like change in our lives is motivated by sharing our thoughts and feelings with others, especially around our values and how we associate with wealth and the body, right? Taurus is the body. So how do you communicate about your body? What your body needs? How do you communicate about your value, your, sorry, your wealth? your relationship to wealth and what you need in terms of wealth. You know, like how, situations in work, for example, you know, how do you like to be compensated? How do your beliefs around your values or your self-worth even speak to that? And so, yeah, get curious about your what your body is trying to tell you also. I think that's always important, but this week in particular, if you want to tune into that, do some deep listening. Uh, July, the card of the month, is grounded in groundlessness. I reside upon and within an ever-present foundation of unshakable love. This oracle comes as an invitation to ground into the unshakable source within and around you. As you pause, welcoming your breath more fully into your body, you can attune to the true stability that is ever-present, regardless of the dynamic circumstances of life. Take this moment and allow your consciousness to move through your feet and into the earth that you may feel the ground of your sacred body and then allow your awareness to continue through the earth until you root into the vast spaciousness of all. When your sense of ground is rooted only within this earthly existence, it is easy to be shaken by the ebb and flow of life's impermanence. By remembering the truth of your star-like nature, you can sense that just as the rays of the sun are centered in their source and simultaneously emanating out in all directions, you two are interconnected and supported in all ways. As your existence is anchored to the true foundation, you will move with ever-increasing grace with all that life offers, even when it is uncomfortable. The illuminated intention, feel free to repeat this to yourself. I am rooted in the source of love I am. Rooted in the source of love I am. I love that. And we're starting quarter three. Ay, yeah, yeah. Do you want to hear about quarter three? Remember yourself. Regardless of what is going on around you, remember you can always rest within yourself. Giving and receiving is the same. When you open to receive, you allow another to shine their brilliance. This offer to receive is your gift. Mm hmm Giving and receiving are the same. All right. That's interesting. Um, I decided that for cancer season, I'm going to work with the Modern Witch Tarot. I've interviewed all of my decks. And of all of my decks... The Illuminated, not the Illuminated, sorry, the, the Modern Witch Tarot. This one feels the most watery. This feels the most like, who did what to you and when? It feels very like best friend deck. This feels like the voice I want to listen to this month. 
So that's who we got. The Modern Witch Tarot. I do have a video on interviewing your deck. If you want to understand more about the voice of your deck and what I mean by that exactly, I'll post a link. You can check it out. Um, it is a spread that I teach in my workshop, which is happening on re next. It's happening on retreat, um, but there are still some spots available. It's a women's retreat. It's in the Midwest. It's in Big Michigan, Big Rapids, Michigan, July 14th through the 16th. So let me know if you want to join. It'd be great to have you. Um, all right, last shuffle. Here we go. <laughs> that is bizarre. Okay. Just the way that the cut happened was so weird. It's like cut in the same place twice. Of course, underneath we start with the King of Wands, Ace of Wands. Oh. Six of Swords in reverse, and the Magician. Oh yeah, and the Devil. The Chariot, there's Cancer. Happy birthday, Cancers. Page of Pentacles, the Tower. There's the Tower, there's Uranus. Page of Pentacles is about wanting to learn. We want to invest in something. It's not quite a big thing yet, but it's... um. This is an investment into some into some sort of change. Four of Cups, Queen of Cups, the Sun. Um, if you or someone you know is experiencing energy that they're not, um, it's like someone is conserving their energy here um, and investing it only in the places where they want to see move forward. This is this is really positive actually because it's like we're having to say no in order to have deeper listening within ourselves and then therefore that makes us more joyous more happy because we're able to listen to hear ourselves and and listen and take action based on what it is that we're um feeling experiencing queen of cups there is dead center ace of cups are you kidding me ten of pentacles in reverse two of cups Okay, so this, um, there's passion here, I will say. There's, it's like some people are manifesting a partner for the summer, I think just in time for, um, well, this is Venus and Leo. I think, um, Venus, remember Venus is going retrograde, so it, it'll shake things up a bit. I think that there's some... Um, resistance here as well um, I think actually what's showing up here six of swords is the energy of resistance um, when it's showing up in the reverse if it's upright it means we're moving on from something um, from from something more chaotic into something more calm and when it shows up in the reverse and I see something like the devil king of wands and the ace of wands I'm actually sensing that someone is actually willing to be more of like the troublemaker. Somebody is, what we don't see underneath is that there is some sort of desire here for passion to um, come through. Um, this is definitely the magician. We're manifesting from a place of our desires. Okay. That's what's underneath. Then we have Chariot, Page of Pentacles, the Tower, Four of Cups, Queen of Cups, the Sun, Ace of Cups, Ten of Pentacles in reverse. Ten of Pentacles, that's the energy of release what you do not claim. Is there something here that doesn't belong? I think that your connection to yourself, um, understanding that you do have the strength, um, if you have the desire, you have the strength and the willpower to move in a new direction 
um, with your you know, time, money, resource, investment. Um, you can invest in change just the same as you can invest in something that has been around for some time. In this case, I feel that there is something that has been a, um, a part of your life, Ten of Pentacles. I mean, that to me is an activation of the fourth house as well. There's a lot of fourth house, a lot of cancer energy here, a lot of water energy, and there's Uranus. So, and remember, Mercury's in cancer. So we're seeing, we, of course, are seeing a lot of astrology reflected in the tarot cards today. The sun, that's Leo. Chariot, that's Cancer. Devil, that's Capricorn. Hey, full moon Capricorn. And we have the two of cups here as well. So I do feel that overall this, whatever change is here, it's actually, um, if, if things seem, feel like they're falling apart in some ways, I, I think that there is maybe just some shadow work to be done here um, in terms of being more intentional, for sure. I think we could all be more intentional because the Four of Cups is showing that you know, the Four of Cups is somebody saying, no, I'm not available for this, but you know what I am available for? Queen of Cups, she's available for herself. She's putting herself first. She's resonating with the sun energy. This is the sun, sunflower. This is joy. This is um, innocence. It's it's very light and bright energy, and it's joy and it's passion. I do see that there. I mean, if for some of you it may resonate, you're wanting to manifest like a, a passionate relationship. I see that coming through, and even though the desire is passionate, what actually cuts through is, um, which shows this Two of Cups, is there's a new relationship of sorts that feels like emotionally intimate. Um, it really, I think, it, you know, it re I'll, I'll say this, it reflects what you cultivate. What are you cultivating for yourself is what you get. You know, the Two of Cups is sort of like a mirror. So um, the quality of your relationships is directly um, a reflection of your relationship with yourself. So tonight's assignment, definitely look at different areas of your life. Look at the second house and the, the second house, 10th house, fifth house, your values, wealth, your um, determination, where, where do those things lie for you, 10th house, your ambition, what are, what are you putting forward, 